Hi, welcome to my system here. This is Arconlex B LXQT. So it's actually not the normal kind of, um, well, Arconlex ISO that we're on. This is number 14. We have 14 desktops now. LXQT is the last one. We're working with a Q terminal, which looks a little bit similar as Control Alt or Super Return is better. This is Termite. Okay, Termite. And um, well, it's the terminal from LXQT and it's there with a Control Alt T. We have this one and a Super Return gives us Termite. So we can switch around and Super T, don't forget it, URXVT. So it's all there. We're going to make on this machine, of course, a tutorial about Arglex D and then install the LXQT. So the launch is officially there. Arc Linux gives you LXQT. After creating an ISO like that, you need to write a lot of stuff. So on arclinuxd.com, you'll get the information that in phase three, you can choose whatever you want as desktop. So number 13, 14 is this one. And what I need to make, well, this is already okay. Let's have a look, LXQT gallery. So you can have a look how that looks. And the next thing to do is installation of Arch Linux Qtile D. So there's a D version and a B version. The B is just easier because five minutes later you'll have a working system. The D is a black screen and you install the scripts you like. That's more fine tuning probably, but it takes more time, but it's more of a learning experience, I think. So anyway, we need to make a video in here. This still says how to install Qtile and it should say how to install LXQT. So all these documents need to be updated. So that's why we're making this video. So why not start from scratch? Super F7, go to your template for our, the virtual box and just clone it here and say, look, we're gonna create Arc Linux D. I'm gonna try this out first in VirtualBox maybe and later on Real Metal. So this video is just about Arclinux D and there we end. So we go to the internet, we get our ISO and it has to be in here. Yes, it is. It's Arclinux D 1907, we're July. So that's the last version, but you can always start from uh, version from in December last year doesn't really matter because it is a rolling uh, system. It means that you can just start with a um, an ISO from years ago. I've done an exercise in that, starting even with an ISO off two years ago from Arch Labs. So Arch Linux is just sturdy. Is 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 hardcore. Is is really. Uh, rocks the boat. Uh, no, rocks just it. No boat. Um, so yeah, you just can do that as well. But of course, if you have the ISO available and you take just the latest one, if you know you have issues because of hardware, maybe these options will work. And if not, then maybe you need even more options with a tap. You can add stuff here. You can add every word to it, right? Enter and run it. I don't think the kernel will understand, so I'm gonna keep it as is. Going back up, escape and tap and E, those are the buttons you need to know here. So going for the first line, all my machines are do not require any intervention. So I'm a little bit of a luck there, but I know people need it. So a choice. There's also a white logo, but the white logo means you are on Arclinx D. It says here in the text, but I've made also a visual change. So blue is Arch Linux and white is Arch Linux D. Just visually already, we know that we're in Arch Linux D with this logo. We're going to use Calamaris and Calamaris is our graphical installer. I believe we have over 30 videos just about Calamaris. So I really think I'm probably <laughs> the the best first in, in tutorials about this product, this application. And I stand behind it. Um, it's a free 
let's mention that as well it's a free um, installer Linux installer in general not just for Arch Linux it's for Linux and one of the major um, developers is Adrian de Groot which is actually a, a Dutch uh, person from the Netherlands so I'm gonna try to remember to buzz, press this button because it really is important to know what version you're on from time to time okay so it's a uh, work in progress like everything is in Linux um, things change and for instance KPM core has changed recently which sets us back a little bit uh, in at Calamaris but um, we'll get there uh, we've installed with 60 ISO so we've installed um, it over I mean 150 160 times because you have virtual box then you have hardware so yeah in all this amount of 160 installations maybe two or three had an issue and I have solutions for the issues just follow the calamari series there are three really important ones there if you're facing issues when this thing breaks right then you have solutions there go and watch the tutorials for the rest it's um, article Linux D so the normal process means five screens and you're up and running in five minutes time you have a machine that's really working for you this is pointing to a server if the server is in maintenance if you don't have internet you don't have wireless okay then it's gonna be New York and then you just click anywhere else where you're living and it's gonna follow this drop down is used as well if you want to but I like to make it a game to just click correctly at the right pixel to have the right um, town okay you can change if you want to change here the system language so more changes in here and more changes in there next choose my keyboard this is necessary otherwise I'm big trouble I need to have my Azerti so you choose whatever keyboard you require you can test it here you can see it here next and then it depends what's on your machine since this is a virtual box it's just gonna be a SSD or hard disk that came from the store it's empty it's black otherwise it will have colors and partitions and you decide what to do up here because of it again the calamari series lots of things I've explained there with four partitions and more no swap swap to hi no hibernate so let's maybe take a look at visually a little bit smaller two gigabytes with hibernate lots uh, bigger because of the fact that it needs to save your RAM so your memory in here but I use with 16 gigabytes of uh, memory I'm using no swap at all going for a next and then the easy part knowing what what is my name and a very difficult password indeed Login automatically without asking for the password. Okay. Use the same password for the administrator account. Would be a smart thing to do, but it's up to you if you want to have a different one. So administrator account in Linux is called root, right? And we are going to create an MS-DOS partition, meaning we're going to use an, um, not an EFI, but um, an MS-DOS, right? And device SDA is going to be partitioned into one big chunk X4 and everything is going to be installed on there that's it now you probably gonna put on a, a coffee put on a kettle like they say or get a coffee and you wait until it's done now this one is Arclix D with only one gigabyte so it's gonna take a round and let's um, see if I still know two, two three gigabyte or something if you're serious at some point in time in um, developing your own ISO then it's gonna be on here Arco Linux ISO and you have to measure from time to time your own system and we've measured everything Arco Linux five minutes later you have a system and, and it boots up in eight seconds and um, Arco Linux D is uh, two minutes and a half it seems and when we have the LTS version, which means it has a uh, long-term support kernel, so an, another kernel. So it means it has to install the kernel. 
So installing the kernel seems to take 20 seconds and that's pretty much what it takes if you install it on a machine. Uh, locally, I mean, you know, yeah, that's correct. So in two minutes and 30, let's say, we'll have a system up and running and we're almost at the end. Control F, you see how time flies. By the by, you see we always use this, this pass by kind of screen. There is no menu, there's nothing. You can, however, open a new window and from there open terminals and do your thing. But that's not the intention. The intention is to just move along because this is a, a, a minimal XFCE that we use to just install everything. And we have 14 desktops to choose from. We boot the existing system. We've uh, changed our design, but this is still the old one on here. But with an update, it just comes in and you have a nicer design. Let's maybe do the update. I don't know where you live, but the system will help you. To, so type in mirror, mirror S, mirror A, mirror D, all aliases to get the fastest Arch Linux repos, not Arco. There are just two Arcos, GitHub and our seat host. So now we have the fastest servers around where I'm living. I'm updating the system and there is a lot of updates and there is indeed in here you see maybe I can't point in this black screen but you see a, a more or less at this line at the end it says here Vimix git update. So let's do the update um, that's fine by us. So basically two things I see there, two Arch Linux elements, and he'll tell soon enough that Arch Linux NeoFetch Git is a, um, going to be installed in ETC Scale, and it's something you really need to know about Arch Linux. The stuff we developed that's new is going to be put in ETC Scale. So if you want to have the new stuff in, there's an easy alias which overrides everything that has that that's on your home directory. So you need to be smart about it. Do I want to override the newer settings um, on my home directory? Okay, so, but just um, go to our websites and there are lots of articles and videos pointing out the fun and the dangers of a scale command, an alias. You see the line now at the bottom, the file has been installed in etc scale, right? So I suggest you update in terminals. So you see also the messages that come with it. So Pacman or package manager is providing us all the time uh, info. And Pamac AOR is great. I use it all the time to look up stuff, but updating I really do in the terminal to follow what is happening to my machine. And of course, to rectify anything if something should be wrong. So we have updated. What do you do? We reboot and I'll show you the new logo that we have or the new grub thing that we have, which better. It's gonna be like this now. So it means the line, the blue line is not going to be over the text, which is better because when making the Calamari series, we saw that you have, uh, I mean like 10 lines or something, then you'll see something, uh, well, it's less readable, let's say. So we've done an update. Update means Arch Linux and Arch Linux. Last thing is check out if there is something available from the AUR. So PKSYUA is going to check everything. But if you do first an update and then a PKSYUA, then you'll see it's just the AUR stuff that comes in. But everything is fine. This means this tutorial is at an end. If you um, then it's up to you to decide what desktop to take. So if you end up in this screen, the idea, where's my mouse? The idea is to actually go to arclinuxd.com and choose what phase are you in? Do you want to stick with XFC, Openbox and i3, the three desktops from Arclinux ISO, or do you want to venture in a new kind of desktop and play around with that? So that's what we still need to make for LXQT. So the installation of Arch D, LXQT is next up. All right. Enjoy the learning phase. Enjoy 
the fun and um, take care. Cheers.